I have asthma. And growing up, my life at times felt like a terrifying cycle of asthma attacks triggered without warning and severe anxiety attacks. As my throat began to feel as, it was sealing, as if it was sealing off and the walls closing in around me. I've had many trips to the emergency room, even within the past year, because of this chain of events. For, like all physical suffering, asthma is not a purely physical condition. It is psychological and emotional, and can feel completely beyond the individual's control. Once while driving, fortunately with my family, I had one of these asthma attacks. One moment I was in the car, the next I was being carried into a kind stranger's house to lie on a bed, not knowing where I was or if I would ever leave. I can't describe to you what it feels like to feel as though you are going to die, but I can tell you that it is a feeling that you never forget. That being said, I am not just here to talk about my experience with asthma. I'm here today as a concerned citizen who bears witness on a daily basis to a system that puts short-term profit over the long-term well-being of the people who comprise it. This is a matter of respect for life and the people's right and responsibility to protect the commons on which we all depend and are all in inexorably a part of. Going through with these regulations is a matter of public health, but it is also a strong statement of the values that our political and economic system represents and foments in society at large. Throughout my life, I have watched as we as a culture have moved away from cooperation and respect for life toward greed and dominance over nature. This movement has led us to an existential crisis that threatens our continuation as a species and certainly our continuation as a functional society. Coal is the forerunner of this crisis, the grand contributor to climate change, which has already changed the world in unprecedented ways and increasingly continues to threaten life at every level. Institutions, policies, and social structures play a central role in shaping our lived experience. What policies could better embody the appreciation of others and of nature, health, and fair opportunities for all? There are values implicit in saying that coal companies' bottom line should be prioritized over the continuing damage to people's health, function, and well-being as a result of pollution, specifically avoidable pollution, that with the help of the previous administration, we had already decided to limit. I'm here today because I believe in a life-sustaining society, which requires clean, innocuous air to breathe. It is unethical and unacceptable to continue allowing coal-burning power plants to emit toxic chemicals that affect life at every level a moment longer than is necessary. Thanks to the O'Malley administration's regulations, that moment has come and passed. I believe that our ability to live our lives to their fullest should not be hampered by superfluous greed and superficial arguments. You and I, our lives matter. Our ability to function fully and feel whole is directly impacted by our environment and the context in which we live our lives. An environment that was once stable and in balance, able to grow and support all life on Earth, grows more unstable every day, polluted with toxic chemicals and the prioritization of profit without concern for human suffering. This is a wake up call. A heartfelt request to the state to support the transition that is underway. The shift to a life sustaining world devoid of unnecessary energy sources that poison the few things we actually do need to survive. This is not a matter of material <coughs> confidence, but a matter of poisoning the ingredients to life, which, as far as we know, exists only here on Earth. When we cannot change the laws of nature, 
nor manufacture breathable air and drinkable water, perhaps those necessities should come first. Now is the time to rethink our values, to consider the long-term consequences of short-sighted choices, to imagine the world 100 years now, 100 years from now, and pause. Pause long enough to remember who we are, what we're doing here, and that it is our responsibility to put life first. <laughs>